Hello, my friend, and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain, and I'm your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our seven day a week, seven minutes of wisdom podcast. This is day 272 of our trek, and yesterday I asked you, How heavy is your backpack? And I must follow up with another question today Have you taken the steps to lighten your load? This concept will be important to us for the next three or four days as we explore wandering in the wilderness by faith. If you do miss any of the Wisdom Trek episodes, please go to wisdom-trek.com to listen to them and to read the daily journal. We are recording our podcast from our studios at the Big House in Marietta, Ohio. It's been a great joy to have our grandson Kip with us this week. He's done so well working on Granny's Surface Pro tablet during the day in our office with Granny and Gramps on each side of him. He's worked on the Thomas the Train and Daniel Tiger Neighborhood games for long stretches at a time. Both of these programs have great moral teachings and principles built into them. It has been a joy just to watch him. We were on site with one of our clients in Marietta on Friday, and we took Kip along with us there also. It has taken us years to build up the lifestyle business where we can do work as we do. We still do work hard and it usually includes many hours per week. But being location independent has become a reality. It allows us to wander from various locations and still be able to complete our work. As we consider the concept of wandering, we want to ponder what it really means to be wandering in the wilderness by faith. When I hear the phrase wandering in the wilderness, it brings to mind how the nation of Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years on their way to the promised land. This was due to their lack of faith that God would help them to occupy the promised land. They could have possessed the land in less than a year from the time that they left Egypt, but because of their disbelief, the trip stretched out 40 times longer. We see that the older generation of the Israelites, whom God had freed from the slavery of Egypt, die in the wilderness. The story of their journey through the wilderness shows us that they never overcame their slave mentality, the mindset that they brought with them from Egypt. They were set free, but in their minds they were still shackled as if they had never left. Their thinking, and thus their attitudes and contact, constantly reverted to the way that had been molded in Egypt. The nation of Israel had witnessed the terrible plagues that were God's punishment on the Egyptians. They also witnessed the awesome miracles that demonstrated God's mercy upon them. The Red Sea opened up for them. They lived under a cool cloud during the day and a warm pillar of fire at night. They had their daily needs supplied to them directly by God, and yet the Israelites found that the wilderness to be nothing more than a huge cemetery in which they wandered for over 40 years. It is not unusual for all of humanity, and even Christ followers, to be slaves to the past practices, teachings, and mindsets. We need to be free from our mentality of slavery. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 tells us, So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in the slavery to the law. What the nation of Israel experienced in their wandering in the wilderness serves as an example for us as mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11. These things happened to them for an example for us. They were written down to warn us who live in the end of the age. And this is a type of our spiritual journey. Canaan, the promised land, represents the kingdom of God to us. But those older Israelites never made it there. They fell short of their goal because of their lack of faith that was controlled by the mindset of slavery. In graphic language, Paul writes in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 17, And who made God angry for 40 years? Was it the people who sin, whose corpse lay in the wilderness? Or to use a modern phrase, they were dropping like flies. According to some commentaries, this last phrase indicates the scattering of dismembered bodies as if they had been left unburied. These corpses were the same people who came out of Egypt with great joy, excited about their newfound liberty. They yearned to be settled and free in a land of their own. But instead of knowing the joy and plenty of the promised land, they chose to sentence themselves to live in a life of homeless wandering in a barren land and to die, perhaps even buried in unmarked graves. They were chosen to be beneficiaries of God's great blessings in a rich land. They instead lived hungry and poor in the wilderness, discontented and often at war because of their sins. Their example ought to be a sobering warning to us. As Christ followers, we were promised this by Jesus in John chapter 10, verse 10, which reads, The thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. So let me ask you, are you living the rich and satisfying life, or are you still wandering in your wilderness? Paul put his finger on the source of the problem and why their hearts could not be changed, why they consistently and persistently sinned and rebelled. This is written in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 19. So we see that because of their unbelief, they were not able to enter his rest. Paul later turns this thought into an admonition for us in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. 
God's promise of entering his rest still stands, so we ought to tremble with fear that some of you might fail to experience it. For this good news, that God has prepared this rest, has been announced to us just as it was to them. But it did them no good because they didn't share the faith of those who had listened to God. Not only did Israel have the witness of the numerous demonstrations of God's presence and power among them to provide the foundation for faith, but they were also given the word of God by his servant Moses and Aaron. In addition, they had living examples of faith in Moses, Aaron, well, most of the time, Joshua, Caleb, and others. God supplied these men with gifts of the Spirit as his testimony that should have provided more incentive for the Israelites to believe him. But in Hebrews chapter 3.17 we read that God was angry with them for 40 years. If ever a people almost drove God to a point of exasperation, it was the Israelites in the wilderness. We must not allow such a powerful lesson to pass by unheeded. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 15 verse 4, such things were written in the scriptures long ago to teach us. And the scriptures give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled. The lesson is clear. To believe God revealed their faith by obeying Him. Those who do not believe disobey. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 12 warns us, Be careful then, dear brothers and sisters. Make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving, turning you away from the living God. As we just finished part 1 today, we explored wandering in the wilderness by faith, where a young nation of Israel struggled in their faith and obedience, even though God showed them many miracles. But let's put it into perspective. Are we that different today? We have the entire revelation of God's Word in the Bible, yet many times we struggle with faith and obedience as well. Tomorrow on our trek, we will explore what living by faith means through the right kind of faith. So encourage your family and friends to join us and then come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. That will finish our podcast for today. Just as you enjoy these daily doses of wisdom, We ask you to help us to grow Wisdom Trek by sharing it with your family and friends through email, Facebook, Twitter, or in person as you meet with them, and invite them to come along with us each day. The journal for today's trek can be found at wisdom-trek.com. Thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I do consider you my friend, as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. As we take this trek together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, Listen intentionally, learn continuously, then to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.